Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing you my Brawler Magic and Sorcery PvP build for the Waking Flames DLC. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely hate it when Sork streak 5, 6, 20 times. It's just a very, you know, not fun in play style. So, Horcrux does what Horcrux does best. Uh, we fix that, we change up the meta, and we make PvP fun again. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys and before we get into the bread and butter of today's video a huge shout out to my patrons you guys are absolutely amazing thank you so much for funding my ramen noodle addiction okay 75 percent of you guys are not currently subscribed so please do your boy horcrux a favor please like and subscribe doing your pvp top 5 link is in the description below also we have a community discord link is also down in the description so Here's a character sheet guys, we're just going to jump right into it because I know you guys only care about what sets we're using and you're going to peace out of the video. Perfectly fine with me. So here's everything uh, semi buffed, this is well, without continuous, everything goes up by 10% with continuous. There's the front bar, here's the back bar, a pretty tanky as is. We are a high elf, bewitch sugar skulls, and the mage mundus. Now this is a sword ward variant, there is also a wrestle staff variant if you want to use that. So very first set we're running is Spinner's Inferno staff. We have almost 12k spell penetration. Spell penetration is going to be huge next patch, so invest in the sharpened. We're running this uh, Inferno staff with a weapon damage enchantment on the front bar. Back bar we're running sword and board of iron blood. Again you can run restoration staff, I'll go over how to adjust your bars. And ideally you want escapist poisons. Running Gaze of Sithis. This is a well fitted build. Pretty much everything you have is well fitted. We don't toss anything into M Pen. If you are newer to Magic or Sorcerer, I would suggest putting points or having traits of M Pen because it's very unforgiving when you get caught with your pants down with this build. Okay. Next up, we're running is Magna Incarnate. Gives you a one piece recovery uh, for stamina and magic. Stamina recovery is very important on Magic of Sorcerer, especially if you're running a Roly Poly Oli build, uh, you know, with the well fitted. And then last piece that we have here, guys, oh, excuse me, the last set we have is two-piece training. I don't have the stones to change just to well-fitted, but I will. And then if you want to recovery on your jewelry, please, if you run the Iron Blood, if you run this build, please transmute your Iron Blood to Arcane. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to have five light pieces on your body. So the armor weights is 511. That's typically why I like to run on any magic of build, because you get the most penetration and spell reduction thereof. Let's get into the skills. Fragments, curse, endless fury. This is a flex spot. You can put this. Uh, you can put whatever here. Uh, execute works just fine. Crushing shock. If you're on controller like I am, I would do crushing shock. If you are on PC, I would run uh, the Sigic Order skill line LA weapon. It just, it just more. Uh, it just works out better mouse and keyboard. Streak, and then shooting star. You can run overload. I have never run Overload on any Magic of Sorcerer just because I think it's kind of cheesy, to be honest. Ever since they removed the third bar, I've never ran Overload. Uh, you can run Frank, and uh, Dawnbreaker Smiting is pretty good if you're on PC. It's kind of hard to line with the burst on controller, so that's why I'm opting for Dawnbreaker here. I mean, excuse me, uh, Meteor on the front bar. Back bar, Dark Conversion. Now, let me go over the Sword and War variant first. The reason we have Dark Conversion on this is because we really don't have a reliable source of healing on Sword and Board, so it's very important we have something they give us a burst heal. So we typically run tripods on this build, which will give us a little bit of a burst heal. Dark conversion um, helps with that as well. We're running uh, both wards, harden and dampen ward. We're running critical surge paired with boundless storm. Now the great synergy between these two abilities is that each time you crit, you get a uh, pretty decent heal. It doesn't matter how much you crit for, just as long as you're critting. 
and then boundless storm and when people are jumping on top of you you're literally zapping everyone around you so you're pretty much creating every second so you're healing every second the only snafu to the running a sword and board is if you get really low into execute range and you don't have a pot up to bring you out of execute range you're going to get melted so you have to be you, know, you have to keep that in mind all right so running the uh, sword and board ultimate spell wall this thing is phenomenal Yes, we are running Sithis. I know you guys will be on the comments. Oh, why are you running Sword and Board if you are running Sithis? Well, you do have to block, guys. Like a Meteor Stun. You know, when you see a Donnie coming in, you still got to block. Yes, it doesn't reduce the damage, but running a Sword and Board, it does reduce the cost. So that's why Sword and Board plays a pivotal part in this build and how I like to play. If you run a Resto Staff, you can take off Critical Surge if you wanted to and slot Healing Ward or, you know, kind of whatever you want. The Healing Ward or Rapid Regen would be my recommendations. You would run the Resto Ulti on the back bar. And then you can keep Dark Conversion if you wanted to. But, um, excuse me, you, you need to remove Dark Conversion and then you can run the rest the same. Now, if you run the Spell Power Pots, you can also remove Critical Surge and Dark Conversion and just have whatever you want on the back. But I personally prefer prefer the sword and board variant myself it's your stamina sustain is phenomenal with sword and board and rest of staff i haven't really gotten away with it because i do block cancel a lot a lot of my animations and it kind of screws me over uh, running your rest of staff so there's the skills on the back bar now let's go over the potions i really like to run there's only three in particular that you need obviously you need tri stats um if you're running like an execute on the front bar not inner light it is pretty important to have crit so Probably seven out of ten times I'm running Alliance Spell Drought, okay? Two out of the ten times I'm running Tripods, and then one out of the ten times, of course, is Essence of Detection. You absolutely need these for those Nightblade boys. I love that class so much. I know you guys do too. Let's go into the Champion Points. Blue Tree first. We got points into Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, Arcane Supremacy, and Ironclad. Going to the red tree, we're speaking into the Roly Poly Oli build, which means we have Shield Master, Bastion, Arcane Alacrity. So while you have a shield activated, you know, on you, the cost of your roll dodges are like null. It's like literally nothing. And then our last is Pain's Refuge. Reduce your damage taken by 1% per negative effect on you. This is gonna change a little bit next patch. It's gonna change it to reduce uh, to 2% per two negative effects, but it's essentially the same thing. Now, let me explain why Iron Blood is so good. If you made it to the end of this video here, Iron Blood is the most slept-on set in the entire game, and everyone should be running this. I swear to God, if you're a solo player, this is hands down the best in slot tank set ever for any light armor build that you guys ever do especially on a sorcerer you have access to major expedition so the downside of iron blood is the 50 percent slow you have major expedition which pretty much takes takes care of that and you also have access to street guys so when this procs you don't even notice it like you really don't and plus if you're playing this build appropriately you're you're going streak like roll dodge roll dodge like it it doesn't matter if Iron Blood is on you. Like, none of that's going to slow you down whatsoever. And if you get really good at it, you can sprint, roll, dodge, and then you can B-hop like that, and you can keep your momentum. As you see right there, I fucked it up, but you can keep your momentum just like that if you get really good at B-hopping after roll, roll, dodge. So, that does it for the build, guys. I think I covered everything pretty quickly and efficiently as possible. This has been my most fun Magical Sorcerer class ever. Don't even pay attention to the stat sheet. Like the max magic on the back bar is pretty abysmal. It does not matter. Yes, Iron Blood applies to your wards. So when your Iron Blood procs, guys, just go in on the offensive. Just delete someone. It's amazing. Hopefully this helps you guys. And I will see you all in the next one. Don't forget to like and sub. Peace.